Praise the Lord. We rise up to pray together to prepare ourselves for the Bible study. I want you to close your eyes and pray to the Lord that the Lord will bless you richly. This Bible study tonight, the Lord will open your heart and open your mind and open your brain. So you'll take in everything the Lord has to teach us. Open your mouth and pray. That tonight the Lord will give you the spirit of wisdom and understanding. That the word of God will profit you and enrich your life. Make you wise unto salvation. Make you diligent the things of the Lord. Walking in the highway of holiness. So that the riches of Christ... The blessings of the Lord will follow after you this year. And the wonderful benefit of studying the Word will be yours without any limitation. Pray that all of us will be obedient hearers of the Word, doers of the Word. Not hear us only. That our souls receive benefit out of the world. And pray that in all our various Bible study centers, all our local churches, here at the headquarters in Lagos, in the stage, the old of Lagos stage, and also all over Nigeria, all over Africa, and beyond Africa, that the Lord himself will help us to be diligent disciples, learning the word, and living by the word that we learn. And pray that the Lord will make us shining lights, Shining in darkness of this world around us. That the name of Jesus will be glorified and exalted and honored. Because of the impact of the word we learn. In the lives of other people. Influencing other people to want to follow after the Lord. Pray for those who are not saved. Those who are not born again, that God will open their eyes of understanding. They will see the need. They will see the necessity of getting saved and living the life of a real, true, steadfast child of God. Pray that backsliders will be restored. Pray that believers will live lives that are changed, lives of new creatures, saintly, sanctified, holy, humble, honest lives. Welcome the spirit of truth here tonight. To reveal, expound, expose the truth unto us. In Jesus' name we pray. A great God in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of coming together. Once again to study your word. It's always a wonderful, beneficial moment when we come together. In the knowledge that we know. You are going to be present with us and you are going to expose, expand the truth unto us. Lord, we pray you drive darkness away from every heart or the light of your word in Jesus' name. Shine across a pathway that Lord, step by step and day after day, will walk in the truth of the Lord in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that whatever is not according to your will in our hearts and our lives, you drive everything away. You break every hard rock, every hard heart, you will break in pieces in Jesus' name. 
and you'll burn with the fire of the Holy Ghost and the scriptures in every heart and every life tonight in Jesus name the lukewarmness and the coldness and the lethargy and the passivity oh Lord we pray you drive away and chase away from every heart in Jesus name that our hearts will burn with the passion of the word. And Lord, as we're here, the grace to obey, you grant unto every one of us. Our lives will be of tremendous benefit to all around us. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. You can see now we're coming to the study of the word. I want to do some digging deep into the word of God tonight. We're looking at Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6, already you know, we've covered chapters 1 through to 5. As you open your Bible to Daniel chapter 6, you want to remember, as we have been journeying from the first milestone, that is from chapter 1, We've seen Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel. We saw them in chapter 1 when the children of Judah were taken captive. And they came to Babylon. And then Nebuchadnezzar decided it will put them in school. They learned the science and the language of the Chaldeans. At the end of that chapter, we see because of their uncompromising life. We we'll see the knowledge God gave them, and we we'll see the light of the truth that the Lord gave them. They became ten times better. Then all the other Chaldeans and all the other children that studied with them, we come to chapter 2 and they will see that great dream of a great image of the gold and the silver and the brass and the iron and the clay. And in the hand of the Almighty God coming and throwing that stone upon that image and then crushed it and crumbled to the ground. And the king looked for interpretation, he couldn't find, and eventually Daniel came and gave the interpretation, and then he chapter 3, you know that Nebuchadnezzar the king raised up a mighty and a great idol and image and he wanted everybody to worship but then our uncompromising friends, believers, saints of God how they said, no, we're not going to bow down to your image, they reported them unto the king and the king called them and said, is it true what I'm hearing about you, that you will not bow down to my image if you will decide not to bow down, I'm going to burn you up in the furnace of fire they said, no king, don't trouble yourself. If it be true that you are going to do that, we're not going to still worship your image. Our God is able to deliver us from the very burning furnace. And did the Lord deliver them? Oh yes, he did. He delivered them. And Nebuchadnezzar himself said, I see four men and walking in the fire. And the appearance of the fourth one is like the son of God. And eventually after that, they were promoted. Promotion comes from the Lord. This year, promotion is waiting for you. But you need to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Not compromising, standing true and standing faithful to the word of God. It is to those who stand and they're standing firm. And they're standing faithful. And whatever may be the fiery furnace of the persecution, they say, here I stand. I'm standing by the wheel, by the word, in the way of the Lord. I will not bend. I will not bow. not compromise. Those are the people the Lord will bless. And this year, that's waiting for you in Jesus' name. In chapter 4, you remember Nebuchadnezzar had another dream. He saw this great tree. And the branches were very many and green, and then all the birds of the air, they were feeding, and they were resting, dwelling under those branches. And then a watcher came from heaven and said, cut it down, and let the stump of it remain for seven seasons. Again, he wanted interpretation of that, and those guardians, and astrologers, and astronomers, and all those uh, people, the magicians of, of uh, Babylon, they were not able to interpret it. When Daniel came again, a man for the hour of crisis. Anytime there was problem, Daniel was able to bring solution. You'll be a man for solution. And then he came and he interpreted the dream and said, Oh king, this is terrible. And interpretation is this, that you'll be driven away from men. And you'll spend seven seasons, seven years with the wild animals. And when you recognize that the almighty God, the most high ruler in the affairs of men, then you'll be brought back. It was 12 months after the interpretation that eventually it came upon him, that the voice came from heaven. 
gave unto you, king, it is said that you'll be driven away from man. It became fulfilled at the end of that. Nebuchadnezzar himself recovered and he got his senses back and he said, I praise and honor him that liveth forever and ever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom from a generation to generation. Then he said something, he said, all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed and counted as nothing in the sight of the Lord. And this almighty God, he does according to his will in heaven and no man can say to him, what Joyous thou. And we thank God that Nebuchadnezzar eventually believed in the Lord and then he passed on. That means he died. And his son Belshazzar then took over. We come to chapter 5. You remember chapter 5 how he had this great feast. And then you have these thousand lords and the wives and the concubines, and they were drinking wine. Not only that, they took the vessels out of the house of the Lord. That is the vessels that Nebuchadnezzar had taken from Jerusalem. They brought to Babylon, and they were drinking out of it. That was profanity. That was terrible blasphemy. And eventually they saw the writing on the wall. Many, many take you for sin. They look for interpretation again. They were always searching for interpretation. But how many of you know that the people of the world will never be able to interpret the writing of the Almighty God? It takes a saint of God. A child of God, a prophet of God, the righteous want to come and interpret. And Daniel came again. Daniel was always there. You'll always be there. When the need arises, when confusion breaks out upon the people, and we need somebody to come and solve the riddle, and then to come and open a ravel on veil what was covered and then show us the mystery you'll always be there in jesus name daniel was available and well, what's the point if somebody has knowledge and vision and revelation but is not available being available is very very important whatever your skill whatever your ability and whatever knowledge you have and whatever measure of the spirit of god you have whatever talent you may have if you are not available when the need is there then you'll be useless. You'll not be useless in Jesus' name. Now, Daniel had knowledge. He had skill. He had wisdom. He had revelation. He had wisdom. He had interpretation. But he was available. And he came to interpret. And he was interpreting for a word. The Belshazzar had said, If anybody is able to interpret this, I'm going to make him the third king. The third to the king in my kingdom. And I'm going to cover him with a garb of honor. And Daniel said, let your reward be for you. Give it to another man. All the same, I'm going to interpret unto you. And he says, this is the interpretation. God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. And thou art weighed and found wanting in the balances. The kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. And it was that very night... That Belshazzar was slain. He died. We're coming now to chapter 5, verses 30 and 31. In that night was Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, slain. And Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. Do you know what has happened? Daniel continued in all those kingdoms. While Nebuchadnezzar was there, Daniel continued. While Belshazzar was there, Daniel continued. And while, Be while Belshazzar passed away, Daniel continued. You will continue. Crowns and thrones perish. And kingdoms rise and wane. Nations rise and fall. But God's kingdom is from generation to generation. His kingdom, his dominion, is an everlasting dominion. He reigns on high. And he rules uninterrupted in the affairs of men. Change in human government is inevitable. As Nebuchadnezzar came and went, and Belshazzar came and is gone, and then the Middle Persians, they came, they also went, and the Grecian government, they also came and they went, and all those people coming and going, coming and going. But the kingdom of God remains. Our God remains. Even though there are changes of government and administration, alteration in the economic condition of nations and of the world, it will not 
not affect the faith of God's children in the promises of the Lord, the church of Jesus will constantly remain in conviction, in commitment to the word of God. We'll see the Babylonian empire, it had fallen, and the Middle Persian empire rose in its stead. Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, was slain, and Darius, the Median, took the kingdom. But the Bible says, and Daniel continued. And Daniel continued. Can you claim that promise this year? That whatever is happening, whatever the condition of this world, whatever the economy of this world, you will continue. In the grace of God, you will continue. In godliness, you are going to continue. In usefulness, you are going to continue. Steadfast in the face, nothing moving you, nothing shaking you, no persecutor, no enemy being able to overcome you, you will continue. And Darius appointed an entirely new administration. He wanted a new cabinet, but he still retained Daniel because, number one, he had an excellent character. He retained Daniel because, number two, he had wonderful integrity. Because, number three, he had wisdom. Because, number four, he had self-renouncing devotion. Number five, he had real experience. Daniel was now advanced in age. Old, the old man approach, was approaching 90 years of age, but he was still active in service. Active in service. What makes us active in service? It's not the physical strength. It's the wisdom, the knowledge, the experience, the skill. Although he was 90 years of age, and probably physical strength might be going down. But he wasn't down in wisdom. He wasn't down in his excellent character. And I should be spoken about you that even though you're advancing in age, your knowledge is increasing. Your wisdom is increasing. Your skill is increasing. Your love and affection for people, wanting to help people, is increasing. As he grew older, so he grew in faith, and he grew in knowledge, and he grew in wisdom, and he grew in leadership skill and ability, and he grew in courage and steadfastness. He grew in spiritual insight and revelation. He grew in usefulness to the Lord and to the kingdom of God. The thought of returning to a life of ease and idleness was not given at any he was not given any, consi- any consideration. Faithful and devoted to God, righteous and trustworthy before men, he was being considered for greater responsibility even by the new king. But then envy came. The people, the other people that saw that even Daniel, they thought, you've had your time. The time of Belshazzar, you were honored and exalted. And even the time of Belshazzar, you were the interpreter of that man's writing on the wall. And now Darius has come. All the time you have been the head and not the tail, they become jealous and envious. And envy led others to plot against his life. But he continued quietly in a prayerful devotion to God. Neither the favor of the king, nor the frowns of the presidents or the princes could change his conviction, his consecration, and commitment to his God. I pray that as God helped this great man to become a man that was steadfast and faithful, that same God will help you and help me in Jesus' name. That brings us now to chapter 6, verse 1. I'm reading to you from Daniel chapter 6. And verse 1, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents of whom Daniel was forced, was forced, he was forced, that the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king sought to set him over the whole realm. In verse 4 then, the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not, they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. 
Then these presidents and princes assembled themselves together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days except save of thee, O king, it shall be cast into a den, into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. In verse 9, wherefore king Darius signed the writing and the decree. Look at verse 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house. And his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a full time. Thank God for Daniel. And I pray that God will give you that same attitude and that same devotion in Jesus' name. As we look at the study tonight, we're going to divide to three parts. Number one, the commendation and promotion of a faithful, truthful believer. The commendation and the promotion of a faithful, truthful believer. Number two, the conspiracy of the persecutors of a faultless, transparent believer. The conspiracy of the persecutors of a faultless, transparent believer. Number three, commitment in prayer by a fearless, trusting believer. We come to number one, the commendation and the promotion of a faithful, truthful believer. As we look at the life of Daniel, Daniel appears to be a model for all believers of all generations. If you question in your mind and you say, is it possible to live a holy life? Well, say the answer is yes. And if you ask, can you give us any example? Can you give us any model? Can you give us somebody that lived, that lived in this dirty world, in this sinful world, in this polluted world, in this contradicting world, in this unbelieving world, and lived a righteous life? Or say, yes, can give you an example. Can you give us an example of somebody that since we met him, he was born again, a real child of God. From the time you met him and you read everything about him, you follow him to the house, you follow him to his office, you follow him to the fellowship, you follow him everywhere. You see him among his enemies, you see him among his friends, you see him with the king, and you see him with the poor, you see him everywhere. Can you tell that that man can still be holy and righteous? We'll say yes, he can still be holy and righteous. What kind of man will that be? Daniel is a good example. Everywhere, every place we meet Daniel, he was righteous. Every place we have met him, whether it's with the king, or the poor people, or with his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or with the enemies that were plotting against him, the people that were persecuting him, in terms of peace, in terms of persecution, we find this man was righteous. And it was all by the grace of God. And we say, if the grace of God was sufficient for a man like Daniel, that grace is sufficient for you and for me. The same God that did it in him can do it in you. Can do it in me. If we will have the same faith and the same commitment and the same consecration that Daniel had, we will have the same lifestyle and behavior, the same righteousness and holiness in our lives. We're going to have it in Jesus' name. Let's look at Daniel again, chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 1. And let's see this man in the midst of the rest of the people. It's like a white lily growing out of a dirty surrounding. And yet the dirt or the dust was not upon this white lily. Righteous, faithful, holy, saintly, sanctified. In Daniel chapter 6 verse 1. It pleased the reals to set over the kingdom and hundred and twenty princes. Which should be over the whole kingdom. They are just taking over the kingdom. 
And it was a vast, a large kingdom. And what he did was to divide that whole kingdom, that whole territory, that whole continent into 120 parts. And then he will have somebody over each part. A prince over each part. And he had 120 of them. And then to control all the 120, he wanted three presidents. So that a president take 40, another president 40, another president 40. And then out among the three, you have all the 120. That is like having proper administration. He now wanted to set up his cabinet, verse 2. And over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first. He thought of Daniel to coordinate everything. It is like when you have a city and you divide it, you divide into districts. And then you group some of those districts together, you call them groups. And then you have somebody at the top is a representative of the old district. You are thinking of a nation and you divide that nation into regions. And you have all these many regions and then out of those regions you have states. Then you group some states and regions together. You have somebody on top there in the zone. Southwest zone or northwest zone or northeast zone or the middle belt zone or southeast or south-south. That is what he was doing here so that he'll be able to have proper administration, organization. And then he said that the princes may, might give accounts unto them. That is, the princes will be giving accounts, will be giving reports unto the presidents, and then that the king should have no damage. That organization, that administration, that division was done so that everything will go smoothly. Everything will be cared for and there will be no error, there will be no fault, there will be no damage, there will be no destruction, there will be no rebellion in the whole kingdom. Isn't that the reason why in the church, when you divide this up and divide this up and we say this is in charge of that and this person is in charge of this, that person is in charge of this, so that everything will be according to the word of God. But, but you know there are people that they don't understand They say why are you dividing them up Why don't we just have everything all together If we have everything all together We will not be able to supervise very well And we learn this from scripture Look at verse 3 This Daniel Then this Daniel was preferred Above the presidents and the princes Because an excellent spirit was found in him he was now going to be chosen to lead everybody. And it's not because of tribal affiliation. It's not because of he, Daniel, giving any gift or giving anything to the king. It was because of his character, because of his charisma, because of his comportment, because of his lifestyle, because of his behavior. And that's how people are choosing to in leadership. People are not choosing just because, uh, you know, they are able to say yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, madam, yes, madam. And they are not choosing because they come from this tribe or that tribe, but because an excellent spirit was found in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm and that's uh, what we learn men who aspire to ascend to positions of greater responsibility and usefulness must be willing to pay the price the price of purity that's the price Daniel paid. The price of integrity. Dependable man. A man that no matter where he was in the day, in the night, you could depend upon that man. He was firm. He was upright. And then a man of accountability and dependability in times of difficulty. If you're going to aspire... To be here, to, to be a, a person that is recognized and is going to put, be put in charge of other people like Daniel, you need to pay the price. And it's not, you know, there's some people that uh, they want to use their bold face and crash into positions of honor. They want to be able to act in an unruly way, rude manner. A terrible way. So that uh, the leadership will be afraid of them. And they'll say, okay, I know what you want. You want position. Get the position and leave me alone. Never. It's never done that way. It's the price of purity. The price of holiness. And the price of dependability. And the price of accountability. It's always the high way of self-denial. The way of self-forgetfulness in service. That leads to success and promotion. Those who intend to wear the crown. 
crown must be willing to bear the cross. Daniel did not seek recognition or greatness. His only desire was to serve God and man. And he saw, he saw, he, and he saw promotion as an opportunity for doing good and a larger opening for greater usefulness. It wasn't just looking for position or looking for promotion so that they'll say, I am such and such. I'm above all the presidents. I'm above all the princes. I have this great position now. I have this title. It wasn't for title. It wasn't for position. It wasn't seeking any recognition. He just wanted to be useful in the kingdom of God. In fact, he never campaigned. He never sought any position. Wherever he was, he was satisfied and he used all the skill that he had. That was what brought him recognition. If we have such an attitude as Daniel had, God will put us where we ought to be. We don't fight for it. We don't push other people down. We don't intimidate leadership so that a leadership is so much afraid of us and says, okay, you're looking for a chance, get it and let me rest. We never do that because Daniel never did that. What's important is to get saved and live a life of real salvation, real conversion, and get sanctified and demonstrate that holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Daniel did not reach this high position by any sudden spring. He moved up gradually through various levels of service and usefulness. His excellent spirit won him extraordinary success and his truthfulness won him trust. His faithfulness won him the favor of the king and his integrity won him the interest of the king. That's why it says in that verse 3 that this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was found in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm, scripturally sound convictions, highly and high and holy principles of living, integrity, transparent righteousness will never go unnoticed. The eyes of the King of Heaven, the eyes of the King of Kings, the eyes of the Almighty God Himself are on all such people as Daniel to set them over soul saving ministries so that the kingdom of God will have no damage. Even earthly leaders seek such people like Daniel to occupy strategic positions so that the king should have no damage. An excellent spirit of genuine piety. A clear conscience in all actions relating to God. A man made Daniel a man of uncompromising integrity that he was. The spirit, not the flesh. Godly behavior, not goodly beauty. It's the principal thing and Daniel's clarity of purpose, Daniel's commitment to purity, and Daniel's constancy in prayer, Daniel's courage during persecution, Daniel's contentment without pretense, sent he, set him apart as a unique man whose only reason for living is seeking God's glory. Seeking God's glory. Now you know something about Daniel. He never sought, never sought, never sought position. Look at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 21. For all seek their own, and not the things which are Jesus Christ. Those are backsliders. Those are the people that do not think about heaven. They don't think about holiness. All they are thinking about is, what position can I occupy now? What privilege can I have now? What recognition can I have now? And they're willing to push everybody else down. So that they'll trample on the rest of the people. Even to trample upon maybe the, lead, the leadership. So that they can get to where they're going. Not Daniel. Not Daniel. And Daniel was not using any political method to be able to get the position. He just lived a righteous life. What a great inspiration for us. And what a great example and challenge for you and for me that we just live the life that God wants us to live and then whatever position, privilege, authority and or whatever he wants to give us then he will give us. Now you see that there are qualities for us to be able to have that kind of privilege and position. Exodus chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 19. Exodus chapter 18. We're looking at verse 19. I came now unto my voice, 
I will give thee counsel. And God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to God word. That thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws. And shall show them the way wherein they must work. That's the responsibility of leadership. That's why we come to the Bible study to be shown the way wherein we must walk. And what the work that they must do. Moreover, that shall provide out of all the people. What kind of men? Able men. Able men. Able men. Just take care of your ability. Take care of your skill. Take care of your spirituality. Take care of your lifestyle. The position will come. The privilege will come. I don't get busy just searching and running after the position. Just take care of your life, of your character. And it says men, able men, such as fear God. And men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them. Place such over them. And that's what King Darius was trying to do. He wanted to place Daniel over them because of his righteousness. Because of the life that he had seen. And because of the grace of God and the godliness that he saw in his life. And he says, place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds and rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. And then it says in verse 22, and let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself. And they shall shall bear the body of thee. If thou do this sin and God command thee so, if God commands you so, then shall thou be able to endure. And all these people shall also go to their place in peace. You see then that for us to be useful in the kingdom of God and to be placed in a position of authority and leadership, our lives count. Our experiences count. And our faithfulness counts. Our integrity counts. We're looking at some 101 one. Psalm 101. I'm reading from verse 2. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Take care of that. If you take care of your purity, the Lord will take care of the position. Just take care that you want to demonstrate you are born again. You want to demonstrate you are a real child of God. And if there's any temptation coming, if there is any sin, try to get into your life. Say, no, that cannot be. I want to live a righteous life. I want to live a clean life. I want to live a life that shows I have an excellent spirit like Daniel. And that's why the psalmist said, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. With a perfect, perfect, perfect heart. And look at verse 6. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. David said she was a king. And he said, I need people. And I need people who will be able to also manage uh, this region and this state and this locality and this section of the work. And he said, while I'm looking for the people, I'm not going to look for the people that are boisterous and pushy and demanding and intimidating, saying, give me position, give me this. My eyes will be upon the faithful, upon the faithful in the land. And then he said, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way shall serve me. That's what leadership should always be looking for. In the district, in the zone, in the house fellowship, in the region, in the state, in the country. The people that have Christian experiences. And he said they don't care anything for position. They don't care anything for, you know, having ruling over other people. All they care for is that they want to live their life. It says in verse, in verse 7, He that walketh the seed shall not dwell within my house. David said, now I'm not going to please, place those people in positions of authority, those who are deceitful, those who are hypocritical, and those who do not show they have the grace of God and the experience of being associated, affiliated with the Lord. And it says, it says, and he that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will only destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. Acts of the Apostles chapter 6. Now the church needed to choose people, just like King Darius was looking for somebody 
God, he was looking for somebody that he will place over the presidents and over the princes so that the kingdom and the king will not have any damage. The people of God too, they were looking for those who will serve in the household of faith. And what qualification did they line up? Did they line up in Acts chapter 6? I'm looking at verse 3. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you, seven men of honest report. Seven men of honest report. And in our districts, in our groups, in our regions, in our states, whenever we're looking for people, it's not just people who can recite the doctrine. The people that can say, they can dot every I and cross every T. And they say, I've been there all the time. I've been long in the church. I came at such and such. A time. We're looking for people of honest report. The people that their community will say, yes, we know that man. When he was a sinner, before he knew the Lord, before he got saved, we knew him. And when he came to know the Lord and his life changed, we know him. The same thing, the leadership should be able to tell. We know this man. We know his integrity. And we know his purity, and we know his sincerity, we know his honesty, we know he's a person that stands upon the truth. If the leadership cannot bear that testimony about somebody, that leader should not choose that person to be a leader, to be an assistant, to be a coordinator, to be a group coordinator, or to be anybody that is doing anything in the kingdom of God, because we must be sure that we want those who are saved to lead sinners unto the Lord, and those who are sanctified to lead believers unto sanctification. It's not just the knowledge we have in the head. It's the sincerity, the integrity, the holiness, the righteousness that we have. And it says, brethren, look ye out among yourselves, among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost, saved, sanctified, and filled, baptized, immersed in the Holy Ghost, and wisdom, and whom, whom we may appoint over this business. I want you to pick up that word wisdom, and wisdom, and wisdom. What kind of wisdom? It's not the wisdom of this world. There are some people that have political wisdom. We don't need that in the church. There are some people that have worldly wisdom. We don't need that in the church. We need the wisdom of God that comes when a person actually knows the Lord. And it is that kind of spiritual wisdom that qualifies a person to have any position or place of responsibility in the house of God. Let's come to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 6, how be it will speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world. Not the wisdom of this world. You know the wisdom of this world that will kill others so they can take their place. The wisdom that will outdo others so they can take their place. The wisdom that will push the person in front of push him down so we can walk over him and take his place. Not that kind of wisdom, but the wisdom of God. How be it will speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the wisdom, nor of the princes of this world that come to know. Chapter 3, verse 19. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 19. For the wisdom of this world is what? It's foolishness with God. That's why you don't want to choose somebody that just has the wisdom of the world, the methods of the world, the politics of the world, and the maneuvering of the world, and the remote control of the world, which is foolishness with God. And say so then you put him over this and over that, and then the work of God will have damage. In James chapter 3, in James chapter 3, I'm reading to you from verse 14. James chapter 3, verse 14. But if ye have bitter envies and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. And it says, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. 
that tells us the end that when we're talking about wisdom as one of the qualifications of the people that will serve in the vineyard of the Lord is talking of spiritual wisdom. The wisdom that comes from above that keeps the person righteous and holy. And then after that, he has the passion, the desire, and the pursuit and the purpose to help other people into salvation and into a sanctified life. And we're looking at First Corinthians chapter 4. We read something about Daniel. Daniel had faithfulness. And it was because of that faithfulness, that integrity, and that honesty, that the Lord was not choosing him through Darius to bring him to the place they wanted to bring him. In First Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 Let a man so account of us As of the ministers of Christ And stewards of the mysteries of God Moreover it is required in stewards That a man be what? Not only that you are faithful But be found faithful You might say I'm faithful Well let's find you faithful If we have not discovered it If we have not found it out if we have not seen it demonstrated and manifested, all the testimonies somebody can give, I am faithful, I am faithful, I am faithful, is of no value. He must be found faithful. That is when we look at his life, and we examine his life, and we examine everything that we see. He must be found faithful. And it is those who are found faithful, they are chosen as stewards and servants in the house of the Lord. In Second Timothy chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 19. Second Timothy chapter 2. Verse 19, nevertheless, the foundation of God's on the shore, having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ do what? Depart from iniquity. Don't worry about position. Don't worry about usefulness. Don't worry about office. Don't worry about title. All you need to care about is depart from iniquity. And the Lord will take care of the rest. In verse, in verse 21, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Don't worry about the honor. Don't seek the honor. Don't run after the honor. Don't run after the position. Don't run after recognition. All you need to do, purge yourself. If a man therefore purge himself from these, it shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto what? Every good work. In First Timothy chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 1. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This is a, is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. The office of a preacher, he desireth a good work. And the office of a state overseer, he desireth a good work. The office of a region overseer, he desireth a good work. And the office of a group coordinator, of a coordinator, of a section leader, he desireth a good work. How is he going to have that office of the bishop? Of the minister by campaigning, tell me, by pushing other people down, by trying to walk his way to it. No, I see going to have it. Look at verse 2. A bishop then must be blameless. Just take care of your life and make sure you have a Christian life, a righteous life, a pure life, a holy life, a sanctified, saintly life. It is that blameless life, it is that righteous life that God will be looking at. And he says, this is a saved soul. This is a sanctified soul. And because this is a person of integrity, of righteousness, of purity, it is then the Lord will say, I need you for this position. Now you will see that in the life of Daniel. All he cared for was his steadfastness, dependability, availability, and integrity. And once he took care of that, then everything that he needed, everything came. Everything will come to you in Jesus' name. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of two wives, one and a half wives, one wife and a concubine. Of what? One wife. Integrity. Commitment to just your wife and your wife alone. 
I know other woman knows about you what your wife knows about you. There's that faithfulness and commitment. And just take care of that. If you take care of your life and take care of your integrity and your righteousness, the position is there. It will be available rather than fighting for it and pursuing it and uh, pushing other people down so you can have something. It says the bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober of good behavior, giving to hospitality and apt to teach. Not giving to wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy looker, but patient, not a brawler, and not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? But six is very important. Let's read it out once you go. Not a novice. Who is a novice? Somebody just got converted. Somebody just came. You know Daniel? Daniel was an aged man. And Daniel, from his teenage years, he had known the Lord. He had been following the Lord step by step, day after day, month after month, year after year. And that man had gathered experience. And it wasn't a novice that, you know, maybe somebody that just came into a recognition or just known about, you know, three years ago, about ten years ago. Long, long time. And that's why, you know, in our church here, at the headquarters in particular, we have some of our leaders who have been here since the 70s. And they have proved themselves faithful. Some of our leaders have been here for 20 years, for 25 years, for 30 years. And for those 30 years and sunshine and rain, difficulty and e and easy time, they have been following the Lord. And when we challenged them and rebuked them, they were steadfast. They, they, didn't, they didn't do any political thing. They just had integrity. And those of us in the church who respect such leaders. And in our state of Asia, some of them have been there for 30 years, 25 years, many, many years. And they have proved their integrity. And we should respect such people. And, you know, and those of us who are younger, you just came a few years ago, you shouldn't have the ambition you want to rule over all these uh, people who have been faithful for so many years. Not in novice. Let's be lifted up with pride. He fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them, which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. I pray the Lord himself will keep us and will remain having integrity and righteousness all through our lives in Jesus' name. And whatever position, whatever privilege the Lord has for us, He'll put us there without any campaign and without any political maneuvering and without any worldly wisdom in Jesus' name. Welcome to point number two, the conspiracy of the persecutors of a faultless, transparent believer. Daniel was faultless. And Daniel was transparent. You could see his life. Even when he was going to pray, he didn't do it in secret. He opened his windows. A transparent man. And everybody saw through his life. And that is the kind of life that the Lord wants us to live. Not covering up anything. Not hiding behind any kind of personality. And then doing this and that. But being transparent and being faultless. We're coming back to Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 4. And here you will see what the Lord himself is uh, revealing to us. That if you are righteous, there are some people that will try to plot against you. But their plot will not work. They'll try to persecute you. But their persecution will not work in Jesus' name. And whatever pit they dig, the Bible says they'll fall into those pits themselves. Give me a good, good Amen. Daniel chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 4. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion, no fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. He was faithful, 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 no fault, no error, no sin, no secret sin. They were told, then said these men, we shall not find 
find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these princes and the, and the, and the presidents assembled together to the king and, and said thus unto him, King Darius live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for such days save of thee O king he shall be cast into, a den, into the den of lions now O king establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed uh, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians that which altereth not wherefore king Darius signed the writing and the decree now what is this they were envious of the man of god of daniel envy envy is a terrible thing i pray it will not be found in your life look at job chapter 5 job chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 2 terrible envy is terrible Envy is dangerous to the envious man, envious woman, himself, herself. In Job chapter 5 verse 2. For wrath killeth the foolish man, and envy slayeth the silly one. Envy slayeth the silly one. The one that has envy wants to destroy himself. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 13. In Proverbs 14, verse 30, a sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. If you see other people progressing like Daniel, other people being promoted like Daniel, other people being uh, exalted like Daniel, and you become envious. It says you'll have rottenness in your bone. The pain will be unbearable, will be terrible. In Proverbs chapter 27, verse 4, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 4. Wrath is cruel. Anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? Who is able to stand before envy? Only people like Daniel. No matter what you plot in envy, in jealousy, no matter the wickedness you are trying to bring out, through the envy and the jealousy that you have against people like Daniel, people like Daniel, they'll escape. They'll be overcomers. And that envy or the plot will not destroy Daniel in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 6. Also, their love and their, and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Their hatred, their envy is now perished. When you read the whole story in Daniel chapter 6, you will see what happened to those people that were envious of Daniel. And, his, and they threw into the lion's den. And the following day, the king rose up and said, Daniel is your God, whom you serve continuously. Is he able to deliver you out of the lions, out of the mouth of the lions? And Daniel said, O king, live forever. The Lord has sent his angel, and he has shut the lion's mouth. And they were not able to hurt me in as much. I have not done any evil, any error in your sight. And so was the king very happy and he took Daniel out of the den of the lions and then all those presidents and the princes that consulted together and plotted together wanting to destroy Daniel they were thrown or their families into the den of lions and before they reached the bottom the lions crushed their bones and ate them up and they all died that's why it says there envy their envy is now perished yeah, but you remain alive in Romans chapter 1 Romans chapter 1 one we're going to see envy Envy is a terrible thing, and it brings the judgment of God upon the people that are envious. Romans chapter 1, I'm reading there from verse 29. Romans chapter 1 verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy. It's a sin. Envy is a sin. Jealousy is a sin. And then look at the result in verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God... That they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Galatians chapter 5. 
In Galatians chapter 5, still talking about being envious or jealous, having envy. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies. What's the first word in verse 21? Envyings, envyings, murders, drunkenness, rebellions, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All those people that plotted against Daniel because of envy, and eventually their bones were crushed by the lions. They went to hell because all the people that have envy and jealousy, they will not be able to get to the kingdom of God. That they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The power of God's transforming grace revealed itself in the virtuous character of Daniel. He was a faithful man. His faithfulness attracted the favor of God and the commendation of the king. But they same faithfulness was construed as a crime by the envious colleagues. Envy will paint a saint as a sinner. Envy will say, ah, it's, uh, it's doing it for this purpose. It's saying that for this purpose. It's trying to prove righteous because they want something. Envy will misinterpret everything. But even though they were looking for fault in Daniel, Daniel was so faithful to his God and his righteousness, even though they misconstrued it, his righteousness and faithfulness was recognized by the king. And they said, neither was there any any error or fault found in him. That was a great testimony to the uprightness of his character. They said concerning the kingdom or concerning the law of his God, his life, his actions were above reproach and yet they sought to find occasion against him. Why? The king was planning to promote him above the precedence. They sought to discredit him and to destroy his character so that they would bring him to a state of disgrace and degradation. If you find anybody in your district trying to belittle another person, disgrace another person, lie against another person, belittle another person, and they want to bring that person to disgrace and degradation so that you'll say, okay, I didn't know he's not uh, that faithful. I didn't know he's not that important. So that you will think they are the people, the good people. And those other good people, they are nothing to be counted with, to be counted off at all. They sought to discredit him and to destroy his character so that they will bring him to a state of disgrace and degradation. He who God favors the world frowns at. The promotion of the righteous excites the envy of a righteous man based on a righteous envious man always seek the ruin of the good and the righteous people. The observation of the most determined enemies of Daniel is the highest testimony to his godly character. What did they say? They said, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except will find it against him concerning the law of his God. And so they conceived an evil plot through which they intended to destroy Daniel. They flattered the king and exalted him to a position of a god, a little god for 30 days. They said, now you'll be god for 30 days. Nobody will ask any request, make any request, make any prayer unto any god except unto you. And the king felt flattered. And Daniel was not consulted, but they said, all of us have agreed, all the presidents and all the princes, and all the governors who have consulted together to establish a royal statute to make this firm decree. And because of the flattery, the flattery blinded the king's eyes. Daniel was not there, but the king could not see clearly after hearing that he would be treated like a little god, like an idol, for about 30 days. Now let us see in some 37. Psalm 37, that kind of conspiracy 
And I pray that you will not be any part, you will not be part of any conspiracy in Jesus' name. You will not be among the people that will bring any of our leaders down, that will not that will want to lie, or that will want to do anything or say anything that will bring any of our leaders down in Jesus' name. As you are trying to claim the promise of God, all those leaders too, they want the promise of God to be fulfilled in them. And if you want the promise of God to be fulfilled in your life, you must desire that our leaders will have those same promises fulfilled in Jesus' name. Give me a good amen. amen. It is when you wish the best for the person in front of you that God will look at your heart and he will say that you are wishing the best for the person in front of you. And the best also will come to you. Our leaders this year, our group coordinators and coordinators and our state overseers and region overseers and national overseers, they will be the head and they will not be the tail. And if you are coming behind them, and then you wish the best for them, it is when you wish the best for the person in front of you, that the best also will come to you in Jesus' name. Our leaders will not fall. Our leaders will not fall. Our leaders will be stronger and stronger in Jesus' name. As you want the best for others, the best will also come to you. In, I'm reading Psalm 37 verse 12. Psalm 37 verse 12. The wicked plotteth against the jaws and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. Then in verse 13 it says, the Lord shall laugh at him. I pray the Lord will not laugh at you. But when you, when you combine together with wicked people and you're plotting against any of our leaders, then the Lord says, you know, put yourself in the group that the Lord is going to laugh at. The Lord will laugh at them for he sees that his day is coming. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, the wicked watches the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand. You are righteous. The Lord will not leave you in the hands of the wicked in Jesus name. Nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way. And he shall exist Exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I said you will see it. The Lord is telling us that we ought to be the pattern of good works, of righteousness, of holiness. We want to follow after Daniel and not follow after the persecutors, after those liars, after those flatterers, after the people that want to see the downfall of the leadership of the people of God. In Titus chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 7. Daniel, sorry, Titus chapter 2, reading from verse 7. Here it tells us how we should live, what we should be, how your life ought to be like that of Daniel, a pattern of righteousness and a pattern of integrity, a pattern of honesty. In Titus chapter 2 verse 7, in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that's of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. You see all those people, they tried to find something to say against Daniel. They couldn't find anything to say truthfully because his life was above reproach. But they still plotted. They wanted to destroy him. And because of that, they said, anybody that prays to any god except to the king, Darius, for those 30 days, will be cast into the lion's den. Let's come back to Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. Now Daniel knew that that writing had been stopped, had been signed. An edict had been pronounced. And the decree had been signed. If you were, look up here for a moment. You know that they said, if anybody goes to church, we'll cast him to the lion's den. If anybody goes to the Bible study, we're going to do this against him. If anybody prays to the Almighty God for these uh, 30 days, for this one month, this is what we're going to do. If you were, what will you do? I said, what will you do? Will you still come to Bible study? Will you serve the Lord? You will serve the Lord. Whatever they will do, whatever they will say, however they will act, because the Lord will be on your side. This year, we're going to serve the Lord. 
Whether the devil likes it or not, we're going to serve the Lord. Whatever the persecutors say, and whatever the persecutors do, we're going to serve the Lord. And we're going to keep on believing firmly, faithfully, in what we have always believed in Jesus' name. Their plot will not change us. Their persecution will not change us. And their conspiracy together will not change us. And if we remain faithful, we are going to win every battle in Jesus' name. This is a year of commitment. And it's a year of courageously following after the Lord. It's a year of standing firm and standing faithful. And nothing is going to turn us around in Jesus' name. And when you stand at such a time, you are going to see great miracle. You are going to see great protection. The lions of this world will not be able to cross your bone. And when all the enemies, when they have come and gone, when they have forgotten, you will still be standing firm on your conviction in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 6, and we're looking at verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a four time. He didn't try to bargain with those persecutors, beg those persecutors, beg those enemies this year. We will not beg any enemy will not beg any persecutor. Because when they have all fallen, we will keep on standing. The Lord has called us, has called us into salvation. And we have responded to that call. He has called us into the kingdom. And we are children of the kingdom in Jesus' name. We will not kneel to any idol. I will not serve any idol. We will not forget our God. That's what they want us to do. They want us to forget our God. To be so much afraid of them. Afraid of their decree. Afraid of their edict. Afraid of their law. More than the laws of God. But we want to declare we are on the Lord's side. And whatever they plan, whatever they plot, will keep on standing as we have always been standing. And the grace of the Lord will see you through in Jesus' name. Psalm 112, Psalm 112, Psalm 112. I'm reading verses 7 and 8. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. You will not be afraid. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. Am I reading that about you? That you will not be afraid? This year there is no fear. This year, there's no timidity. We're going to keep on standing firm on the things we have known. And the Lord, the God of heaven, will be with us in Jesus' name. Psalm 119, verse 51. Psalm 119, verse 51. The proud have had me in great, greatly in derision. Yet have I not declined from thy law. In verse 69, the proud have forged a lie against me. But I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. In verse 83, verse 83, it says, For I am become like a bottle in the smoke, yet I do not forget thy statutes. You see, he says, whatever the problem, whatever the challenge, whatever the persecution, whatever the plot, I'm going to keep on standing, and I'm going to be faithful to the words of the Lord. In verse 80, for how many are the days of thy servant, when will thou execute judgment on them that persecute me? The proud have digged pits for me, which are not after thy law. All thy commandments are faithful, and they persecute me wrongfully. Help thou me, they almost consume me upon the earth. But I forsook not thy precepts. It says in verse 109, verse 109, My soul is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy law. 110, the wicked have laid snare, a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precepts. You see, that's like Daniel, that the plotters and the persecutors and the enemies and the foes and all those wicked, envious people, they 
try to turn me away from the path of righteousness. And they say, I should not pray to God. They say, I should forsake my God. They say, if I don't, then they're going to throw me into the lion's den. But I don't care for their lions as a lion of the tribe of Judah. And that lion of the tribe of Judah will be by you. And all the other lions in this world, they will not be able to do anything against you in Jesus' name. Persecution will come, we will endure. Temptation will come, we will endure. Trials will come, we will endure. The flattery and of the plotters will come, we are going to endure in Jesus' name. In Matthew chapter 10 verse 22. Matthew chapter 10 verse 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure to the end shall be what? Shall be saved. Will you endure to the end? By his grace, you'll endure. In his strength, you will endure. In the salvation of the Lord, you are going to endure. By the power of the Holy Ghost supporting you, surrounding you, you are going to endure in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 24. I'm reading verses 12 and 13. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, tell me the rest, the same shall be saved. That's why we are not backsliders. We are not going to backslide. This year, we're going to remain faithful and steadfast in the Lord and for the Lord all the days of our lives, even in Jesus' name. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. Acts, chapter 20. We're looking at verse 23 and verse 24. Save that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. They were telling Paul the Apostle, prophecy was coming. The Holy Ghost speaking through many people, bonds and afflictions and persecution waiting for him. But he said in verse 24, but none of these things move me. Can we say that together? Opposition will come, none of these things move me. None of these things move everybody. The persecutors will plot. Enemies will try to run after you. They'll try to deny you of your right. They'll tell lies against you. They'll try to take away what you deserve from you. But you'll say, none of these things move me. Nothing will move you. You'll be standing in integrity. You'll be standing as a child of God. And the grace of God will overflow in your life in Jesus' name. God kept Daniel, God will keep you. And God cared, Paul the Apostle, God will keep you. Like Paul the Apostle said, and like Daniel demonstrated, you will say, you will demonstrate that none of these things move me, neither count I my life down to myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. You will finish. The race you have started, and this ministry God has put in your hand, in your locality where you are, nothing will take it away from your hand. You'll finish your course with joy. And then the ministry which have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. The Lord was with that Daniel. The Lord will be with you. In Jude verse 24. Jude verse 24 now. Unto him that is able. Is your God able? Unto him that's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. Amen. Now we learn something about Daniel today. We learn that Daniel from young age, he started following the Lord and then as he advanced in age, about 90 years of age at that time now, he was still firm in the Lord as his so his strength was. Do you know the promise the Lord is giving you this year as you are getting older and older? Because now today, you are one month older than last year. Am I right? And this year now, you are one year older than this time last year. And as your days are, so will your strength be. You will not be weak. You will not be weary. You will not be tired. Enemies will not overcome you. You will not backslide. You'll be going from strength to strength and grace to grace. This year will be the best year of your life. 
Every good thing you have been praying for, God will give you this year. Just remain faithful and something good is coming your way. I want to, I want to show something you are going to mark in your Bible before you pray. This is for you. Say, this is for me. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 25. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. And as thy days, so shall thy strength be. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. Today, you are stronger than you were yesterday. Tomorrow, you'll be stronger than you are today. Next month, you'll be stronger than you are this month. Strength will be coming to your life every time in Jesus' name. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. We have another Daniel today, and that is you. You will stand. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. You will not fall. You will not backslide. The grace of God will be multiplied in your life. Don't worry about those persecutors and those slanderers and whatever they say and whatever they do. You're going to be an overcomer for the rest of your life. Just tell the Lord, I need your grace, I need your strength, I need your power, I need the ability, divine ability to sustain me. And the Lord will sustain you. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. You're not afraid of persecution. You're not afraid of their plot. You're not afraid of their lies. You're not afraid of their temptation. Because the Lord has promised you, like he did for Daniel, he will do for you. As your days, so shall your strength be. And so shall the grace be. And so shall the power be. Economies may change, governments may change, situations may change, even people may change. But our God remains the same, ever the same. That's why if you are following the Lord, like Daniel followed the Lord, you want to remain the same. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. You want to hold on to your integrity. I want to pray that, oh Lord, I want to grow like Daniel grew. Grow in commitment to the Lord. Grow in my consecration to the Lord. Grow in my submission, in my yieldedness to the Lord. And grow in courage, fearlessness, boldness in the Lord to grow. To grow in steadfastness. Nothing shaking your faith or shaking your mind or shaking your consecration or shaking your resolve. Pray that the Lord will give you the, give you the holy life, the sanctified life, the pure life, like He gave unto Daniel. And he even said they couldn't find any fault in him, any error in him, any sin in his life. In the private, he was pure and righteous. In the public, he was pure and righteous. With his friends, he was pure and righteous. In the midst of the enemies, he was pure and righteous. When he was alone, he was pure and righteous. When he was people, he was pure and righteous. Pray that God will give you that firm, unchanging, unbending, unyielding resolve. That the purity and the holiness, the sanctification, the saintliness, will be part of your life. Pray that you will not be afraid of persecutors or plotters. Of liars, of hypocritical people, of intimidators, will not be afraid and give up your faith. You have the mind that Daniel had, the spirit that Daniel had, the strength of character that Daniel had, the courage of conviction that Daniel had.
You're so consecrated and committed to the Lord. That you're telling the Lord, O oh Lord, keep me firm and faithful. Firm and faithful. That the evidence of real salvation, evidence of real sanctification, evidence of humility and holiness, integrity, will be visible in your life. And wherever you are, you'll be standing as representative of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Holy and righteous, pure and good. Pray that the Lord will so help you. Pray that the Lord will so energize you in the inner man. That you'll be holy, you'll be righteous, you'll be pure, sanctified, uncompromising. Pray that the grace of God will be so much abundant in your life. That at difficult times, Top times, that will be the time that you stand for holiness and righteousness in your life and you demonstrate it uncompromisingly. Pray that the Lord will not make you to not allow you to be part of envious people, jealous people, that are wishing evil for people in front of you, wanting to push down the people in front of you, wanting to disgrace, degrade, destroy the leaders in front of you. Pray. That will not be of an envious spirit, of a jealous spirit. Pray that you'll take joy in the promotion of Daniel. You'll take joy in the favor coming to Daniel. You'll not be of corrupt mind, full of envy, full of jealousy. You'll not use the wisdom of the world. Political wisdom to bring down leaders in front of you because you want to take their place. Pray that God will help you to only depend upon love, holiness, humility, integrity, Christian character, faithfulness, that you will not manipulate anything. So the blessings of God will come freely into your life. Then you will know what I've got. I've got it not by manipulation. Pray that God will help you to appreciate the elderly leaders among us. Daniels among us. Who have been in this race for more than 30, 40 years. Faithfully running the race. Pray that, pray that those of us who are younger will freely and fully wholeheartedly give the place to those who are older than us in the faith knowing that it is their right to lead us to guide us and to show us the way pray that those of us who are younger will not be envious and want to pull our leaders down to take their place this year we will not plot will not persecute will not lie, will not be insincere, will freely give the reign of leadership to those who have been in the Lord before us. Pray that God will make you commit, committed in prayer, fearless, bold, trust in the Lord. You not fear the edict of any man, the decree of any man, whatever they are trying to say. To discourage you from following after the Lord. 
Anyone that will tell you not to follow the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Even if they threaten you, you brush aside every threat of man, every decree of man. And you pledge your life to serve the Lord uncompromisingly. Pray that this year your life will be a life of devotion, a year of a year of conviction, a life of conviction, of consecration, of prayer, fellowship, communion with the Lord. Pray that your life will be a life of courage. Do not be shaking and wobbling, fearful and timid before the enemy this year. That the conviction the Lord has planted in your heart. You will live by it. Stand by it. You live a consistently holy life. Consistently righteous life. You will be another Daniel for this age. Be faithful. And remember. Heaven is not for backsliders. He that shall endure. Unto the end. The same shall be saved. Pray that the Lord will help you to be faithful in righteousness and holiness and purity. Faithful to everything the Lord has taught you. Everything that you know. And if you are like that, like Daniel, the same protection, the same preservation, the same power, the same signs and wonders and miracles, the same insight, the same revelation that the Lord gave unto Daniel. It will give you the same strength, divine energy. The Lord gave unto Daniel. It will give unto you. As your days, so shall your strength be. As you grow older,